Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, protesters denounce US support for Jonal Moyes regime outside embassy in Haiti. Israeli forces illegally detain five Palestinian children in the occupied West Bank. Death toll in Myanmar protests near 70 as Amnesty reports planned use of lethal force. Thai airline workers fear job and wage cuts as companies introduce restructuring plans. In our first story, several Haitian social organizations held a protest outside the US embassy in Port-au-Prince on March 11. People were protesting against the United States' recognition and support of the regime of de facto President Jovenel Moïse. Thursday's protest was organized by the Democratic and Popular Sector Party, the People's Alliance, Revolutionary Women and others. Protesters have reiterated that they do not recognize Moïse as the legitimate president of Haiti. As per the constitution, his term in office was supposed to end on February 7th of this year. However, he has refused to step down, claiming that his term will end in 2022. He has also announced intentions to hold presidential elections in September. The decision has also been supported by the UN, despite widespread opposition across the country. The Federation of Haitian Lawyers also stated that the Provisional Electoral Council set up by Moïse does not have the authority to organize elections. As protests have continued, threats of police violence have also increased. Multiple reports of protesters being brutally beaten and even shot had been reported in February. Despite this, rallies and demonstrations have been held every Sunday in the capital city. In our next story, five Palestinian children were illegally detained by Israeli forces in Hebron in the occupied West Bank on March 10th. Israeli rights group Beth Salem posted footage of heavily armed officers dragging children between the ages of 8 and 13. They were then taken to a police station and detained for two hours. Two children who were aged 12 and 13 were ordered to report to the police next week for further questioning. As per Israeli law, children above the age of 12 can face legal action. The children were playing in the area and collecting wild plants on Wednesday. Two settlers were seen emerging from, from behind some trees and scaring the children away. They then called the security forces. The settlers were residing in an illegal outpost called Havard Mall. Israeli officers claimed that they were investigating the case of trespassing. Settler attacks and violence against Palestinians have been reported, Palestinians have been reported routinely in the occupied territories. Palestinian news agency Wafa reported that settlers had fired also at two Palestinian children grazing their sheep on the same day. Rights groups have condemned the detention of Palestinian children by Israeli forces as a violation of international humanitarian law. Some have estimated that Israel prosecutes at least 500 to 700 Palestinian children every year. Palestinian rights group Adamir has reported that there are at least 140 Palestinian children being currently held in prisons. In our next story, at least 12 protesters were held by security forces in Myanmar on March 11th. The highest number of casualties was reported from the Magwe region where at least 7 protesters were shot and killed, as reported by Myanmar Now. Another 10 people were injured when the police opened fire and deployed tear gas grenades. Deaths in Yangon, Mandalay, Bago and Tongo have also been reported. As per UN estimates, the death toll in Myanmar's anti-coup protest stands near 70. UN Special Rapporteur Thomas Andrews has outlined evidence of possible crimes against humanity. Footage of killings, arrests and beatings has been widely circulated. Soldiers have also been seen destroying property and looting shops. Andrews has further stated that thousands of mem members of ethnic nationalities have been forcibly displaced. New research by Amnesty International has shown the extensive use of battlefield weapons against protesters. Security forces appear to have used premeditated and systematic strategies of attack. The group has stated that many of the killings amount to extrajudicial executions. The research is based on an analysis of 55 video clips filmed between 28 February and March 8th. Evidence shows the use of sniper and semi-automatic rifles and submachine guns. Excessive use of flash bang grenades, tear gas and water cannons has also been documented. Meanwhile, military units including the Yangon Command and the 33rd, 77th and 101st Light Infantry Divisions have been operating alongside the police. Some of these military divisions are known to have committed rights violations in areas including Rakhine, Kachin and the Northern Shan states. The 33rd Division in particular was previously implicated in crimes against humanity, committed against the Rohingya community in 2017. In our next story, workers at Thai Airways International have raised concerns regarding the restructuring plans proposed by the company. Workers employed at a flag carrier company are said to face drastic job losses and pay cuts. Trade union leaders met with Thailand's Labour Minister Shuchar Choklin on March 12th to discuss the contracts which they have deemed as unfair and illegal. The restructuring plans include a reduction of the workforce by approximately 4 to 6,000 jobs over the next five years. The contracts with thousands of employees will be revised and 5 to 6,000 voluntary redundancies will be introduced. Union leaders believe that these changes will lead to significant cuts in wages and benefits. They have also claimed that the company pressured employees to enter into new work agreements and enter new work contracts. According to the union president, the new agreements violate the State Enterprise Relations Act. The disputed Thai International Airways has occurred within days of a similar case in Bangkok Suvarnabhumi Airport. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.